right, so let's introduce our colorful cast of members, starting with me. I am Scarlet Lian, played by Rina. I never know which one. Me? <laughs> Mike, yeah. Uh, I am Mike, and I'm playing Mordecai. No, I'm just fucking with you at this point. <laughs> I'm Steve. I'm going to be playing Domino. I am Bully, and I will be playing at Toledo. Um, and I'm Lou, and I'll be your storyteller for uh, this evening. Why don't we start episode five with, with episode five? Episode five with a quick recap. In the last session, our cast managed to find out the goings on in the basement of that wrecked house. After disposing of the creatures that were down there for, with sheer force and fire, the coterie handed one of the thin blood hoodlums over to the sheriff. Seeing as they have gained more evidence for their case and perhaps have a chance of earning the good graces of Kevin Jackson, they went out to celebrate at the outpost, Dom's newly acquired establishment. Seeing as how Scarlet is a mere fledgling, all the boys thought it would be an opportune teaching experience for hunting here in Chicago. The result, of course, was a <clears throat> series of ridiculous shenanigans involving biker patrons, Scarlet with her awe-induced charisma, and Bobby's undeniable audacity. Shortly after traumatizing our cowboy priest, they headed off for the day to rest. The next night, the group once again decided to meet up at the academy to take care of their own personal businesses. Unbeknownst to them, the whole investigation regarding Colin Watts will soon take another unexpected turn. We're gonna pick up where we left off last session inside the Stuart Freeman Academy Private Library. I believe we left off with uh, Toledo and Mordecai in Miss Stewart's um, pretty much office. The both of you walk in, um, one of you shuts the door, uh, and you are all alone with her. She looks both of you a little annoyed because of the curious, uh, the previous happenings with, you know, the door crashing and whatnot. But then she just awaits for the both of you to speak. She looks to you first, Mordecai. Speak. She looks to you first. Pleasant evening. Yes. Could be better. But seeing as how the night just started off with quite a ruckus. What can I do for yeah. you, gentlemen? After you, Toledo. Oh, uh, I actually have no idea why you're here, Mordecai. So yeah, you, you should go. I got teacher Business. stuff to talk about. Yeah, I can so. come back. No, I mean, go go right ahead. No, no, I'll leave. I'll speak with uh, the good lady once you're off. Caretaking your phone. Oh, no, no, by all means. You're, I, I'm, I'm going to be here all the time. I work here. So uh, I'm going to let you take care of the stuff. Is this going to you're take make all sure hour that... between the two of you flirting in front of me? I back, I back out of the room. I go quicker. No, I'm joking. I stay in. Well, now that we are alone, Mr. Toledo, have you had a chance to look over the paperwork? Terms and conditions? Yes. Yes, me and my associates have looked over the, uh, the contract and we find it agreeable. Yes, Sister Isidore is a very, very well-spoken woman. And she comes from a place of power, I should say. Very strong woman. Yes, she is. I would not. You know what? She's going to do a lot of good for the students here. Or a lot of bad for the ones who need it. You plan on bringing her along? Uh, me and her, it's sort of a package deal. I, she won't physically be here unless you want her. No, she won't physically be here. But she's going to help with some of my lesson plans and 
theology and spiritualness and all that. Perhaps it might be a good example of a mother figure for these young students, seeing as how most of them are sireless. Yeah, you got a rough batch right now. Is it usually like this? Or is it just this particular class is a little rough around the edges? She looks down on her mahogany table as she collects some paperwork and she begins handing them to you. Each of these documents are pretty much portfolios for each student here uh, listed on your journal. She goes over them one by one as she says, most of my students here, at least this year, are thin bloods. They do not know who their sires are, and when we found them, they did not know what they were. In comparison to the previous years, these students are lost causes. Had it not be, had it not been for my intervening, Jackson would have already put Damon to work here. So you're the one behind the whole Thin Bloods being accepted in the Camarilla City thing then, huh? Accepted is a relative term. Jackson tolerates them, but he does not, without the proper guidance, he does not accept them into the fold. And most of these Thin Bloods, they're left out for themselves. I've heard that they've grown in number in the south side. If you don't mind me asking something a little more personal, what's your motivation behind that? Wait, why do you seem to have a soft spot for thin bloods? She eyes you very, very intensely this moment, trying to study you. She you can also tell that she's perhaps hesitant in telling you more information, but she raises a chin up and she says, I have a very colorful background, Mr. Toledo, and I am very, I've been in their place before, lost and with no one to help them. I believe that everyone deserves a chance in life, and more so when their life was taken from them. I, uh, maybe that's why I feel like we're kindred spirits. I had a colored past, you said, and that could describe mine as well. And that's why, I mean, I, I'm right there with you. I think the, I don't quite get all the panic over the thin bloods. I think if anything, there's an opportunity here. Uh, I was very much a lost soul and I didn't have someone like you to look out for me. And the wrong people got to me first. All that's behind me now, but I learned a lot in my long journey. I, th I think it's only right that I pass on what I've learned to other lost souls and make sure they find a purpose. That's all any of us really need is a, a decent purpose. Now more than ever, I think kindred are starting to open up their eyes that there's a little more out there than just collected money or people or power. And, uh, yeah, I think if the thin bloods can see that, see that there's some a different path ahead of them, except just the usual mustache twirling vampire villain shit. I think we could do a lot of good, not just for these thin bloods, not just for this city, but just our kindred as a whole. Well, I do agree with your sentiment, Mr. Toledo. Please watch your language. Kindred, not vampire. Colored past. Colored past, like I said. Uh, yeah, Camarilla rules, Kendra. Right, right, right. Just another adjustment, just another leg of my journey. But um, I, I feel like we're on a similar page. That, that makes me happy. I'm more than just a, a handsome face and a sharp blade. How was, did you get an opportunity to teach our newest fledgling how to hunt? 
I did. I did. I did. Um, it was, it was interesting. She's a natural. I'll give her that. She really knows how to take the reins and just hop on that horse and ride. Um, she, yeah. She was in the driver's seat. I didn't have to do much besides point her towards the, the feed and let her go. I had an interesting talk. I don't know if it's a generational thing that she seems to really, uh, she, she really goes all in, gives a lot of herself for her, for her feeding. And uh, yeah, I don't know, but that's her style. That's her style. I just want to make sure that these, these, these new ones oh. don't get too caught up in the weird relationships between our kind and you know, kind. How separation there. Does she feed? You seem to be explaining things well, rather vaguely, using a metaphor. Yeah, I was talk. quite I specific. Oh no, no, no that student. wasn't a metaphor. I literally caught her tits out riding a guy in a storage room. Uh, yeah, but then she fed from him, and it all worked out. She was hungry, and then she wasn't hungry, and the masquerade was protected. And at the end of the day, what more can we ask for? I didn't, I didn't look. It was an accident. She knows how to feed, and that was the lesson. I explained to her, you don't have to do all that. But she seemed to have wanted to do all that, and hey, if she wants to do it, sure. Please feeding can be a fun Isadora activity. next time. <laughs> That is unnecessary. Copulating with the kind is unne- completely unnecessary. That's what I said. But also, if you think about it, I mean, I mean, I can't do that no more. So, I mean, if they will do it, unless it's not that kind of school. Are we looking for just results? Or are we trying to, how much influence are we really trying to have on these? We just want to make sure that they know how to be good kindred? Or are we trying to make them good people? We pride our excellence here based on respect and values and education. If you can provide that for our students with some field experience, please do so. Given that you are also new to this city, this brings me to my next point. You might want to take a few of these kindred. I would recommend either Kathleen or Celia to have them show you around the domains, as tonight, that will be our lesson. Domain. Yeah, I, I, I get a lot out of that. I think they get a lot of it too. From what I understand, I'm gonna be teaching them more spirit and also some basic uh, defense yes. and whatnot. Please do so. Okay, that's good. How, are we allowed to punish the students? Depends on what kind of punishment you speak of, Mr. Toledo. I obviously do not, not harm final. on my students. Final death like is a, a, it's a, a light slap here and there. Is all I'm saying. Should they break the masquerade, I I expect you to reintegrate them. I read you loud and clear. Excellent. Now, I. We do not have much time, but yes, uh, your next, your first lesson, I believe, would be at around midnight. You will be sitting with uh, the briefing for my for my first lesson this evening, just so you get a feel of how to teach. Yeah, I'm new at that too, so I'll be good. And uh, I think it's good that the students understand right away that I am a teacher, I am an authority figure here. Sooner we get that out of the way, the better. Yes, please. As soon as possible, fix your reputation. There are quite a few of my students who are afraid of the three of you gentlemen. Speaking of which, the other gentleman who's trying to do a meeting with you, what do you know about him? Mordecai. Hmm. Do you have any motives behind finding that out or... I, I'm more trying to, to warn you. It, you know what? I am supposed to work with him. 
I had an incident. I tried smoothing things over. I offered him a boon as an apology. That's what you guys do, boons. And he said, no, it's okay. I want to sit on it. So he, instead of wanting to work with me, he wants to see if he can use stuff again. It ain't going to work at the end. So keep that in mind if he comes to you with his uh, business opportunity. Of course. Does not have my, or likely your, best interests in mind. Which Kendra does. That's what we're trying to change, right? Move away from the mustache twirling selfish shit and go to like, hey, we're in this together or else we're all getting set in the sun together, right? Of course. Now, please send Mr. Mordecai in. I we only have a few minutes left. That I will. Nice talking to you. Get my hat. I'll see you outside. In a bit. Mm-hmm. Turn to Mordecai. She's all warmed up for you. So now I'll take a stroll. You're muted. Much obliged. Okay. Mordecai walks in. Miss Stewart seems to be, you know, uh, fixing some paperwork here and there, perhaps writing a few things on her white board. But she turns to you and she gives you a rather curt smile. I don't want to take up much of your time, Miss Stewart. Um, the thin blood issue in the city uh, is not because of their existence, but because of their uh, naivete. They're not being taught. They're not being taught well. They're not being taught basics, not even uh, the, the traditions uh, can be excused in a, in a sense because they have no sire to teach them those, which is why this ac- academy exists. But the basics, uh, uh, the young lady, Scarlet, um, it was quite entertaining. I'm sure you know of my proclivities, so it's not a, a surprise that I found it exceptionally amusing that she decided to uh, seduce the, uh, the mortal, the, the kind, in the, the manner and extremity that she did, as if she felt that that was the way. And I found that a little bit disheartening in a way because we were there apparently or I just tagged along as Toledo was going to teach her how to feed. There was no teaching. She walked in, she did her own thing. Which is fine. But it concerns me that uh, without the knowledge of the traditions, of the masquerade, they will be too sloppy, at which point then the sheriff will be involved, cover-ups will have to happen, etc., etc., etc. My business with you, uh, I believe my my associate, Alexia, uh, would have sent a communication uh, ahead of me this evening, simply that... Um, Call it a safe haven or a method by which uh, it can be taught to the youth that their capacity for sustenance is not limited to merely bumbling their way through a hunt. There are other mechanisms at our disposal should they be able to Uh, see it within themselves and their own abilities to accomplish these things or find them in other ways. I'm suggesting of sorts a field trip. You know of my den uh, whereupon uh, I have a certain level of influence among the city's elite. You could send the youth there 
not so much as any sort of anything else, just as a sort of an, a learning experience. I don't hunt the traditional way because there is no need for it to happen. There's more than one way to skin this proverbial cat. And the more knowledge they have, the better armed they will be. The less masquerade breach will happen, the less the sheriff will be involved. Yes. Well, it might certainly prove enlightening for our students to witness other ways to feed. They all must know how to hunt for themselves and how to Absolutely. clean up properly. One cannot rely on one's herd all the time, though it might be provided for you. What would happen if they were to leave the domain, the safety of the Camarilla and hunt somewhere else, perhaps Anarch territory? Some would consider that poaching, but one kindred needs to do what one kindred needs to do. And that is to feed. They it must learn the, the etiquette. They must learn the ways. They must learn how to preserve the masquerade. Though I do not mind letting you have this field trip with some of my students, they still have much to learn. Absolutely. Only then will they have their own herds to cultivate. Exactly. I just wish to, if anything else, sort of uh, assist in the lesson planning and use, as it were, as a, there are more than one way. Should they choose that avenue? Hmm. Perhaps one of these days, although I do have another suggestion that we can meet perhaps in the middle. You see, there are many parties that are to be held every single year in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And since you are well established here in the city, you've been to them, you know, people, and you're very, I believe Miss Annabelle is quite fond of you. So, if you'd like, we can have that as a little field trip with you as the chaperone. Many balls and masquerade parties. Good place to You wish me to learn. escort your students to an Annabelle party? Not necessarily Annabelle's. There are a few other part, uh, a few other kindred here who have grand balls and parties to be thrown, such as Alec or Kevin Jackson himself. Hmm. True. Might be a great way for you to make connections and as well as show who you truly are, Mr. Mordecai. I am but a humble servant to Camarilla. Indeed. Show that to, to our students and perhaps think you can be a great role model for them. I intend to be. We will speak again. And I back out of the room. Pleasure speaking with you, Mr. Mordecai. And as you walk out, we will rewind time just a tiny bit to go back to Scarlet, Dom, and a little a girl by the name of Catherine outside. She looks at you with intent, Scarlet. Dom, you see this happening. You're uh, a few, uh, a few uh, ways down the hallway, but you, you see and perhaps hear everything if you were actively listening. She shakes her oh, head yeah. at Scarlet after she said the words murderer to you. She stands there with ferocity. Okay. After she says the murder thing, like in the accusatory tone, I'm gonna walk over in that direction. Oh. I see you brought your bodyguard. Hardly my bodyguard. 
all still the same responsible for for Colin's for Colin's death. Sorry, are you referring to I when you're saying that responsibility for Colin's death lies in this general direction? Is it not true? Tell me. I mean, I'm going to look and see, is anybody in the hallway? There are, there are students who are going to and from dormitories to classrooms. There's also just students in the courtyard. Human also, you did make a ruckus non- earlier. Yeah. Sorry, Accidentally. <laughs> Accidentally. Alleged, allegedly <laughs> made a ruckus. No, termites. Everybody knows that. So are they, are they like human or like kindred? Uh, they they're crying, just watery teardrops. I think they're human, Dom. They have bruises. Then I kind of not like not. As you look scared. towards her, uh, you would notice that her a bit of her cheek is busted up her lip um has some subtle bruising um her shoulder uh, her arms and whatnot have dark patches on them like they're you know she got bruised or something from falling down the stairs i uh, can't really tell without an intelligence and medicine role but you know that she's probably hurt in some way who hurt you She folds her arms and tries to, you know, uh, pull her sleeves to hide her skin. No one, no one. Answer the question. Why won't you, won't, won't you guys answer the question? Hmm? Why did you, you didn't have actually to pose question? a question? You told us we were murderers. I asked her. You just called me a why did, murderer. Why did you do it? Why? I didn't do anything. I don't understand. What did he ever do to you? I hardly even talked to Colleen. I don't know the guy. (laughs) The rumors were true then. You're all just cold-blooded psychopaths, she says as she pushes past the both of you. Yeah, she's not pushing past me. Is she okay? She tries to push past you with she's, your force strength. Yeah, she's gonna, she's gonna bounce off. <laughs> she listen, and she then I kind of like hold bounces her. Off. Yeah, as she bounces off, I hold her by the shoulder. Like, listen, I don't know what you've been hearing, but it's not true. <laughs> How about we we just talk? Let's sit down and talk. No, I I have to go. I'm sorry, I have to go. She says that she kind of tries to Ooh. yank you off. Hurt you. I, no, but nobody hurt in, me. I'm going to use Intimidate. All right, let's see that. Uh, either resolve an Intimidation roll or Manipulation and Intimidation roll. Neither one of those are very good, so I'm just going to go... Uh, <laughs> Are you really, are you really going to intimidate the poor woman? Yes. <laughs> oh no. God. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is the good, this poor little good, girl. The good cup and the bad cup situation here. Oh, one success. Did you did you activate Daunt? Not yet. I'm holding on to that particular trump card okay. till later. With one success, Dom, she looks at you. You can see that there is pain in her eyes, not just physical pain, but emotional pain. But as those words leave your mouth, she just shakes her head as she begins to cry once again. She looks one last time at Colin's uh, door. She turns away. And as she does, you would notice uh, Toledo walk out of the the public, uh, excuse me, the private library. She's gonna walk past you, Toledo. You see this woman now. Um, she's wearing a black dress, very modest. She has short brown hair. She has dark brown eyes. 
um, she has Caucasian features, and um, she seems to be Dom seems to be trying to scare another person in this situation. I'm going to look at her, look at Dom. Say, God damn it! What the hell did you do? She, I didn't do nothing. The woman was calling us a murderer. I'll, so you beat her up? It did. We didn't beat her up. It, she was like that, and we were asking why she's like that. I'm just gonna got, ignore them and look at her, ma'am. Are you okay? Yeah. Let me ask you a question, Toledo. Is she in one piece? Yeah, I'm just right now trying to block them out and just look look at this person. And uh, are you okay? Go ahead and roll your wits and insight, Toledo. She looks towards you. She immediately recognizes the bolo tie and the cowboy hat. And you can see her face sort of warm up with, uh, as you look at her. But with that one, one success, maybe you know her or maybe you've heard of her. Um, but she doesn't, you've never actually seen her. But the way she looks at Colin's door and why she's here, maybe she's related to, maybe maybe she's related to Colin's death. You don't know. She looks at yeah. you and she says, I, you're, you're the cowboy. Yeah, I've been called that. I mean, I'm also a professor, a priest, a world-renowned assassin, but I was a cowboy once too. Who, who are you? She folds her arms as she rubs her shoulders, to, uh, her her hands on her shoulders. Catherine. Oh, I am. I'm sorry. I'll take my hat off. Oh, yeah, you're you you were you were Colin's own, um, not girlfriend, right? She begins to cry again. Right. I'll um, kind of bring her in if she lets me, if she's comfortable with that. She pushes you away. Yeah, Colin was a crier too. Um, he, 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 he talked about you. He said some good things about you. I'm, I am. He didn't deserve what happened to him. You know that. I just, I, I just miss him. And I heard I came here. I don't know why I came here. I, it was so stupid of me to come here, but I just wanted answers. That's what we want to. Who do I, I find? Want. And she looks towards Scarlet. What's wrong with Scarlet? I mean, I know what's wrong with Scarlet, but like, outside of the usual. Billy, though, what the fuck? I, I heard she was there. I heard she was there. And Colin. N- no, and Colin it, this isn't. Off the roof. He's not. No, the he only did not. One. It was there. He he, I'm pointing at Billy. He Lido. was. He was pushed. He was thrown. Yeah. Uh, I tried getting to him. And, uh, you guys pushed. Him. Sorry to say, she pushed him. It was too low. Like somebody no. who can just strong arm another person. Believe it or not, I, I think she was there to help too. I, I I caught someone at Elysium, or I caught him running out of Elysium. I followed, and he ran into some. He was in trouble, and the more you can help me put together some of the pieces. Right now, all we can do for Colin is figure out who the hell did that to him and make them pay. I mean, I know who I did know. it, but I, I need to know. find them. I need to know what he was caught up in. It's all right. If you don't know, you don't, I don't know. know. She covers her eyes at this point as she begins to cry more. You see the teardrops just falling down her cheeks constantly. She's weeping and probably grieving. Did, did he tell you about the church I'm at? Where you can find me? If you think of anything... 
or if you just want to talk, Colin was making some huge improvements in his life. And if you just want to talk about Colin or if you have anything that can help, find me at that church or here. I will gladly listen to you. Lend an ear. I promise you that I will find and I will judge and I will punish those responsible for what happened to that boy. She lifts her head up. She looks at you with a bit of determination. She turns to Scarlet once again. And Dom, she turns away and leaves. It is at this point that Mordecai exits out from the private library and the four of you meet once again. Why are Americans so emotional? She's grieving. Let her grieve. She needs someone to be angry with. Right now we don't have the right people. So you're going to have to do for now. Uh, my reputation is non-existent at this point. Do. Might as well. Scarlet, from what I've seen, you're a little wild, but you're tough as hell. If anyone could take a little bit of beat into the reputation, it's you. I, I have a feeling you're going to do a lot to fix it. And then some. People aren't going to remember this incident as a bad thing. All we can do is turn it around. And at the end of the day, your name is going to be synonymous with one of the people who took down the motherfuckers who killed a thin blood and threw him into a lizard. Right now it's bad. bad it's a good thing. That means you're someone who takes care of things. That's a good thing. Really? And then I turn to Mordecai. Like I said, is it gonna be a good thing to be related to this thin blood? Because I don't know about America, but in Russia, dustborns are not exactly welcome. No, this is purely an American trait. I mean, who's welcome and who's not changes one decade to the next. Point to Mordecai. I mean, technically, he's not, his clan's not welcome in the Camarilla City. They lost that. They threw their lot in and uh, they chose my clan instead of his. But mm. here we are, making adjustments. They and certainly me. did. So... I mean, the, the, it's stupid just to think, oh, in one minute someone's accepted or not. That stuff's going to change, and it don't matter. Okay. Be a strong enough person to where you have your own convictions, you make up your own mind about things. Follow the rules just enough not to get your head cut off, and the rest is up to you. Don't be someone's crony, and also don't get yourself killed. I'll glance to Dom real quick. Or at least don't get yourself killed unless you're a strong enough motherfucker to where you can handle yourself like this one. It's like 90% of what Father Toledo just told me just went past my head. Worst damn student. <laughs> but yes, what what is the plan? I think I have classes. So... So does Talino. We're learning about domains tonight. We're going to visit a few. Domains? Oh, okay. You know about domains? You learned about them? No. That's why we're learning about them today. Okay, so I try to teach you about feeding and I'm an asshole because you already knew about feeding. And I assume you know about domains and I'm an asshole because you didn't know about domains. You got a fucking attitude. Now I understand why no one here likes you. That reputation. <laughs> it's all right. Far, uh, it's all right. Vampires are going to fix assholes, it. really. They don't have to be. They just decide to be. It's annoying That's as hell. Very Taking stuff from other people without their consent is kind of assholish. Taking what from who? 
taking blood from kine. Oh. No, eaten? Yeah, I mean, but we don't have to do that necessarily either. You see me with my bags, there's other ways. Just depends how much effort you want to put in. Yeah, but this, this conversation is weird. I'm gonna just go. As you look over uh, uh, Dom's shoulders, Scarlet, you would notice uh, Celia trying to peer out from her room, but she's obviously not gonna budge until the, the three of them leave. Uh, further down the hall, you would see Frankie and Brian emerge from their bedrooms, uh, and they seem to be heading in your direction towards the library since it's almost 10 o'clock. Well, I I will just go with my friends, people my age, and you guys do whatever um, the old kindred do. <laughs> All right, you keep uh, working on that sparkling reputation, young man. <laughs> Ma'am. I'm sorry, your accent is hard to understand at times. I don't think it's the accent. Uh, Frankie waves at you. You see the snake kind of hiss a little bit. <laughs> Brian standing over uh, behind her, you know, just tall Nosferatu kid. Uh, he seems to be wearing a black hoodie uh, to cover most of his face and keep the mask red. But you guys are pretty much in the way, so they're just like standing there awkwardly. Like, can you guys move so my friends can pass by? Scarlet, I think we have we have class. You don't oh, want to yes. be late for Miss yes, Stewart. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and then I turn to Celia, like Celia, let's go. She tries to leave, but seeing as how Dom and Mordecai are still there, she just shifts back to her room. Uh, I I I knock at the, her door and like, let's go, let's go. We're gonna be late. <laughs> you know what clan the squirrely one is. Because that's not really something we should be encouraging. What? Oh, they're like just being so timid. Just <laughs> it's not it's not a not a good look. What's wrong with it? I mean everybody has a gimmick, I guess. I mean, you, we have a walking priest with a face tattoo spouting about the religion and stuff. And we've got yeah, at least... Mordecai <laughs> over here. At least he's confident wow. about it. You're an exactly. apex predator, for Christ's sake. I started acting like it. Huh. Um, honestly, you should be teaching here, too. You've been spouting lessons left and right, and I just feel myself agreeing with you more. Ah, uh, yes, just have everybody in this university. All right, who's, who's in charge? I'll oh. teach PE. <laughs> ben, I was saying it sarcastically. Excellent. Yeah. Oh. Which door? This this door over here, and I'm pointing to the steward door. It's like, do I just go in there and like... Uh, no, 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 no. Something? Let, let's see how that's, things that's go. That's uh, I think... Uh, I can see you having a future here. This is the hardest thing I've ever done in my many years. And I've done a lot of crazy stuff, but dealing with little assholes like that, with the Scarlet. Who... I'm just going to ignore everyone and try to coach Celia out of the room so that we can all go. Like, Brian and Frankie are waiting, Celia. Let's go. Yeah, and that one, they're either so damn full of themselves that their head's so far up their ass, or they're so damn scared they won't even... Oof. Got my work cut out I mean, for me. Nah, yeah, we can. Yeah. We, they need they figures like us. Little, they got a bit of work to do before you know. You know what are they gonna? How are they gonna get blood from somebody God, as nicely? I, like fuck. Sorry, I, I, I think, think we should go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Please, please. Make this is me. lesson number one. Go on. Get. Go to class. Yeah. <laughs> you see Frankie and Brian just you know <laughs> run towards <laughs> class, but uh, Celia doesn't want to leave her room. Does, does Toledo have a whip handy? <laughs> this just. <laughs> do you want to stay here around these people? Actually, Mordecai is more people? likely to have the whip. Please, 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 please make them leave. Please make them leave. Just, just hold my hand and then we run, 
She takes your hand. Yeah, and I stick my head over near there, like. <laughs> no, no. She shuts her door immediately as she pushes yeah. you out. Please take the hand. Squirrely. No, ah, uh, can you just just go and then I try to push the door. You want, but you want me to good. knock? No, 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 just, yeah. just we're gonna be late. See, Leah. <laughs> you right, see Miss Stewart emerge but from the path of the library. <laughs> <laughs> um, she yells out. Oh, she doesn't yell, but she sternly says, Mr. Toledo, Miss Scarlet, please, my library, now. Uh, I think Scarlet's in trouble. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Scarlet. I wonder whose fault is that? Uh, door. Hearing Miss Stewart's voice, uh, Celia immediately opens the door and then closes it right after, locks it, and dashes past you. Mordecai, Dom, Toledo, and Scarlet, you would notice that as she does this, shadows begin to dance around her. Just very slightly. As she just dashes past, she she leaves like a visage of maybe shadows uh, behind her, but she's obviously very scared and she's trying to hide in the darkness as, uh, you know, she doesn't try to meet eyes with either of you. Sense the unseen. Uh, you made me Thank ink. You. You uh. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> it's exactly it. Oh. Mean to Celia. Uh, this is the best Lissambra I've ever met. <laughs> Uh, I don't uh, think we, I've ever uh, met a squirrely Lissandra before. This is brand fucking name love to it. me. All right, yes, I follow uh, Miss Stewart. Okay. I yeah, she's just standing Bob's there with her hands on her hips, like uh, you know, like a homeroom Bob's teacher. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of odd. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, as uh, I Scarlett learned that actually. Uh, Scarlet, you follow suit. Toledo, you're also expected to be at in today's lesson. Um, so you follow suit, leaving Mordecai and Dom to their devices. Miss Stewart gives you another polite nod as she walks in her library and closes it. You kind of want to learn what? Standing with your hands and your hips, being an authority figure type thing? Shit, I can <laughs> teach you that. No, I've heard about that little, little La Sombra trick with shadows. Eh, it's not really all it's cracked up to be. I don't know. So far, Should it looks like wait? it's very, very poor camouflage. Should we just wait for them? Because we have to get a, this investigation shit underway or what? No, they'll be here... I have no idea what the class schedule is like. Miss Stewart probably has them learning some kind of finishing girl etiquette. Toledo's going to be preaching for a while. Yeah, they're probably braiding each other's hair or some shit. I don't know. They're... This is how you bite a human. This is how you extend your fangs. Yeah, I ain't got time for that shit. I mean, it was cute when one was younger, perhaps. I mean, I don't even. Uh, anyway, yeah, let's find like, something the to do. Do the dustborn even have fangs? Like, what is going on there? That I don't know. Hmm. I mean, I don't want to necessarily pull their jaws off to find out, but I mean. The next bunch of drug-addled misfits that we run into, maybe we should do an investigation. Yeah, I suppose. Speaking of, let's go find something to do. All right. Okay. And what is uh, Mordecai and Dom's plan for the next few hours, seeing as how they have class? Honestly, I have no idea. Um, what do we know? So far. Everything that we don't have because we gave to the sheriff, Toledo has, has absconded with in terms of the, the drugs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, 
As far as you guys know, uh, the sheriff has all the evidence and it might be a good time to check in with either the hound or the sheriff to see how that, you know, how your investigation is going with the prince. Um, Let's go to the hound. The sheriff is a piece of shit. Yeah, no, bring Dom to the sheriff. (laughs) They need to catch up. Um, Mordecai, you would probably have uh, contact somehow with one of the hounds. Um, You would know that there are two active hounds, which is uh, Alexa and Moneka. You don't know if there's any other hounds, but you do have contacts to reach Moneka. Yes, I do. Let's go to Moneka. I like him better anyway. But you guys don't kind need of a to proceed with this. Um, you also have, you know, freedom to do whatever you want. Chicago is a city for you to explore. Um, Dom, keep in mind that you do probably need to update the Anarchs at some point of how things are going. Ooh, yeah, that. Some point. Let's but, do that yeah. too. So, uh, Mordecai, do you make a call to your contacts and uh, meet up with a particular Nosferatu hound? Or do you go back to your haven and, you know, do your nightly activities? I mean, the night is young. I can always go home later and do my nightly activities. Um, let's get in contact with the hound. Let's actually get some business accomplished tonight. Well, the other two are in learning how to be pretty. Okay, okay. You yeah, we're going to leave uh, Marilyn Hodgkiss's ballroom dance and charm school and head over to the hound. Okay. So, you would, uh, Wineka would not want to meet with you uh, in public. So he would have asked you guys to meet perhaps uh, around the East Village area, which is uh, a few ways away from Bronzeville, quite a drive away. I imagine you're going to take your bike, Dom, and your limo, uh, Mordecai. But eventually you guys will get to a little part of East Village where, you know, it's secluded. There's a random, it's not random, there's a suburb that's nearby, it's very dark, um, and, you know, it's, I believe it's Monday night, so there's not a lot of people outside right now. You would notice this as you pass by the downtown district as well as the Lower West Side, but eventually you would guys, you guys would have met up a, a particular alleyway that they deem safe. As you guys walk into this alleyway, you would notice a large hooded individual who's got large tusks hanging down from his mouth. Um, and he's got like a mask uh, on his face. He folds his arms and right next to him, as he breaks out of his office gate, is the other hound, Alexa. The blonde one, the blonde Malkavian. Two for one special. She crosses her arms at you as Wanaka stares. What do you guys... What do you guys want? I don't know. Should I handle this, Dom? You're not. If you want. <laughs> Alexa, good evening. Uh, my associate and I were wondering uh, if we could make an inquiry with regards to the progress, uh, if any, that has been made with regards to this particular blood drug situation. Hmm. She ponders to herself whether to answer you sarcastically, but Waneka gives her a look. All right, all right, big guy. She shakes her head. She plays with her hair a little bit, taking her sweet time before answering your question. So far, so good. You guys are doing well, I suppose, for rookies. But this drug you guys found driven the, the others mad. There's no information about it. It's not even drugs. It's something completely different. Which brings us to our point here and why we wanted to meet up when we could have just flat out told you to fuck off, she says with a smile. 
Since you guys are the ones investigating this, and as advised by the prince, you guys should handle this. We argued you shouldn't because you're both, well, you. You guys should find out what's going on with the Tremere since they have the samples. It would be better if you brought more of that substance, but I guess that's a job for you two. Where's this? Where's that priest and the little bitch? What's what's her name? Uh, Why do you think she's hot shit? Scar Scarlet. Yeah, they're they're in finishing school right now. Oh, Funnily right. enough, you mentioned the uh, the Tremere, and I assume they have the drug because of their blood magic. Our Benu Hakim associate also apparently practices this arcanity and has a sample of it himself. I'm not sure if that's acceptable or not, but in the interests of full disclosure, felt it necessary to mention that part. Also, um, advisably, I don't know if he used any particular um, sensory enhancement while looking at that scene where the drug deal uh, went down, where you encountered us last, but uh, you may or may not have noticed the silver haze uh, around any uh, blood product uh, that seems to come in contact with this drug, and that entire uh, warehouse was spackled with it. Yeah, Sunshi mentioned that, but I don't, I don't fucking know what she's talking about. There. Listen, I honestly, I can care less. I really don't give a shit about this, and I don't really give a shit if you guys lose your heads. So, I'm just here to tell you that. If you want to investigate more, you might need to help over, you know, I don't know, someone who does with blood sorcery. Mm. Also, it's couldn't. She just stares at you blankly, unblinking. Uh, don't worry about it. You do you. In this moment, she tilts her head once again. And you see her light blue eyes shift color just a little bit, Dom. You didn't notice this before, but you notice it now. Every time she looks at you, her eye color shifts just a bit. Do I and she snaps so? back. And she smiles. I think we should go, big guy. The She gestures to Waneka, and he agrees, nodding his head. Leave them to have fun for tonight. Do they leave? They begin walking away, but she, her eyes linger on you one last time, Dom. As they revert they... back to the light color, light blue haze, okay. uh, light blue hue. Do I see this? If Dom points it out, yeah, but... Every time, this is perhaps the third time that she's looked at Dom this way. She tilted her head. The first time was Dom, you remember. The first time was at the rooftop when you first met her. But they begin to walk away as Wanaka lets out a little growl and the both of them vanish from sight, perhaps through obfuscate. Most likely through obfuscate. Or it could be just ridiculous amounts of celerity. So she's charming. Hmm. Why are we doing this? Short answer, the prince has a bug up his ass. No, I mean this part. We already knew the prince had a bug up his ass. Why are they, why are they being given the drug and then they give it to the Tremere and then why do we have to back up with the Tremere? Why wouldn't they be the ones talking to the Tremere? Well, aren't the Tremere no longer 
anything, which begs the question as to why they would give the globe to the Tremere in the first place. Well, the Tremere is still in Cam, as far as I know. Some of them. Who knows? It doesn't make any sense to me why we would be investigating this in the first place. No, I'm just following the logical train, right? There is no logic. pass our stuff off to them, and they pass it off to the Tremere, why do we have to double check with the Tremere? Especially, well, okay, I, yeah, I guess I can sort of see it. The two hounds are idiots, and they don't know the difference between could care less and couldn't care less. Uh, Mordecai, go ahead and roll your intelligence and politics in this moment. Uh-oh. This may not go well. Politics? Only because you're the only one who could possibly know what's going on. Possibly, if you roll high enough. <laughs> yep, I was check high. ready for Fist of Cain. Mm-hmm. With uh, one success, unless you reroll. Two successes. Oh, uh, it's not like oh, D20, okay. where uh, 10 doesn't oh, yeah, give yeah. you two successes. Yeah, with only one success, it doesn't doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense why they would give you the job to do this when they could have just did it themselves. But yeah, that's mm-hmm. all you get. And where does where did the both of you go afterwards? Do you guys just go to the Chantry, or do you ignore what they wanted you to do and just do your own thing? Probably head over the Tremere anyway. Yeah. Now, she did mention that uh, if you have any other stuff, you might want to bring it along, but you are free to do whatever you wish. Well, I'm I don't remember how many have... vials that we actually have. I don't actually have any. And we see, Let's head over to the Chantry. Yeah. Mm. And we see both of our Coterie members, Mordecai and Dom, for the first time, alone by themselves, working together to perhaps find out what else is there to know about this Tremere thing. Meanwhile, back at the campus in, pri- in Miss Stewart's private library, um, you would notice Miss Stewart along uh, with perhaps the leader up front, speak about Domain. Now, she stands up there, she straightens her dress and whatnot, and she says, Domain, every kindred has a right to have their own piece of territory. We are, after all, territorial creatures. Currently, we are all under the prince's domain, as this is his city, but it could be broken down into multiple territories. This particular campus is my very own, and you are all under my protection. And that is a very important thing about being in someone's domain. If you are given permission to stay, then you are technically under someone's protection. That is why it's very, very inefficient to travel outside without any know of of people's domains. Isn't that right, Mr. Toledo? That is absolutely correct, Miss Stewart. You always have to announce yourself, children, to whoever is the prince, baron, or whoever else that may possess that particular territory. She continues on about this particular subject, and I need both of you to make a roll for me, please. Intelligence and academics. Uh, <laughs> can I search my blood? You can search your blood, yes. Ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> and she gets hungry. How hungry are you at, Scarlet? Three. Oh gosh. Someone needs to feed again. Yeah, I can't do that what? again. 
Okay. Yeah, with, with two successes, you b- retain a bit of information um, and, well, you, you learn a thing or two. You maybe take some notes down along uh, with your doodling and whatnot, but you would notice everyone else in class doing the same, um, except for uh, Toledo, who seems to just... <laughs> He's just looking around, yes, maybe looking at some books. But Toledo, if you if you'd like, go ahead and roll your wits and awareness, since you're technically you're not a student. Just copying the notes from Frankie. <laughs> hmm. With one success, you don't notice anything strange about this room. You notice that a few of the bookshelves are very much stacked with you know knowledge and whatnot, but you can't tell what they are. Maybe you might. If you spend some time here, maybe you'll learn a thing or two or maybe pick up a book or two that might be very, very interesting for you. But class goes on. Class goes on and things are taught to you, Scarlet, along with the other students. The the one thing you guys would notice is that Chester is not here. No. The lesson continues and time flies by. And uh, it's exactly midnight. She lets you out of class as she thanks you all for coming to her lesson. And everyone begins to stand up and pack their stuff and leave. Is uh, Kathleen around? Kathleen is there up front. She seems more relaxed today. Yeah, I approach her. She looks you up and down. Yes, Miss uh, Scarlet, right? Please keep that cowboy away from me. Like, please. I know, but where is Jester? She shrugs her shoulders. I don't know. I thought you guys were a thing. She pauses before she answers that question. She looks to the ground and she looks to the side and she says, we're not, we're not a thing. What, did you guys break up or something? We were never a... Th- he's, he's not my boyfriend. Okay. Then- we're, we're close, all right? That's it. Don't don't ask. It's not even your business anyway. Okay. Jeez. I'm just asking where's Jester if... You've seen him. You guys are I don't know. Friends. I don't know. He hasn't showed up since yes this morning. He dropped me off and that's it. He He's pretty pissed about the car, by the way, and she looks at Toledo. Alright, that's it. Yeah. Going to Toledo, like this is why you don't destroy somebody's car. You know, I was watching your interaction there. Mm. And we all got our strengths, right? Mm. And I thought right away I saw you. I'm like, this is a girl who knows her way around people who could really pull some strings, get in their heads, use her wiles and whatnot. Why is it every time someone talks to you, they look royally pissed off? So I'm starting to think you're not a talker, but we're going to figure out what you are. Uh, we're going to hone in on it because you're, I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> Talking is the only thing I can do. What the fuck it, do you mean? I just wash. That lady looks pissed off. I don't like her. I'm not trying to. Seems like you dislike a lot of people. I Mr. Toledo, Miss Ventru, uh, Miss Stewart interrupts. Oh, she's Miss Ventrue now. (laughs) Ah, shit. Stuart. Um, (laughs) She says, I believe it might be a good opportunity for Celia. She calls on Celia and she rushes uh, rushes to show you around the city. Take um, Brian and Frankie with you and Scarlett. Mr. Toledo, for tonight, go ahead and have Celia show you around, but keep your manners to yourself. Please. 
don't embarrass us. Miss Scarlet? Uh, yes? Please put on a more pleasing personality. <laughs> Please. I believe Celia, you know where to take them. She nods her head. All right, they are in my care. She looks at you, she furrows her eyebrows a little bit, perhaps pondering if this is a good idea or not. But she just simply nods her head. I yeah. put my trust in your father, Toledo. Yeah. Well, thank you, Miss Stewart. Mm -hmm. After she goes, I'll look to Scarlet. See, that's a woman who, she's prickly like you, but God damn it, she gets results. Like, I don't want to argue with her. It sounds I feel like, like somebody that's... with a stick up her ass. I don't want to Yeah, but like that. it sounds like she could take that stick out and beat you over the head with it and get you in line, too. Maybe that's who you should be emulating a little bit. Like, no one fucks with her from what I see. Don't you want to be someone who no one fucks with? Listen, I just want to graduate the school and fuck off, okay? <laughs> you, have no, you have no aspirations, then. You're just here because you have to be, and then you're just gonna fuck off and do nothing with your life? I turn to Frankie and Brian and say, yeah, enjoy life. They both shake their heads. <laughs> That's kind of bad, Scarlett. <laughs> you can't just have no goals. Uh, I want to I wanna raise a, uh, my own wildlife sanctuary at one, at one point. That's that's noble. And there's a really interesting thing you could do with that as uh, someone of the blood. I'm sure you know. Uh, what about you, young man? Brian um, kind of hunches over as he says, uh, I think the Nosferatu primogen is pretty cool. I met him the other night. Oh, oh yeah? You gonna be like him when you grow up? Yeah. Dude, he's got like all sorts of tech. Tech guy. That's useful. Very dangerous. Mostly useful. All right. Oh, so, I don't think I was supposed to say that. <laughs> your secret's safe with me. So, what I'm gathering is out of your group that, uh, well, there's only one bad apple. I'll look to Scarlet. I'm going to stand next to the other two and sort of shake my head like they were. I ignore Toledo and then, like, <laughs> put an arm around, like, Celia, like, does, Come on, do any, uh, Celia, as, as you usher East Celia over, she says, does anyone know how to drive? Because I, I, I don't know how to drive. Okay. Does the five of you look awkwardly at, at each other? <laughs> 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 um, Brian says, uh, I mean, I'm I new to the city, so uh, I'll do it. Someone whenever. knows how to drive. All right, there'll, there'll be bonus points. Brian can drive. Brian volunteers, and as uh, he kind of goes into a nearby uh, room, and he emerges out of it as a completely different person, you would know that he probably used some sort of obfuscate power. Um, he looks like a generic college kid right now. His Nosferatu features are gone, but he's still wearing the same clothing. All right, let's go, he says. Even his voice is a little altered, but yeah, all five of you rush into a particular vehicle that Miss Stewart has loaned uh, you for the evening. Uh, and Celia sits up front, Brian sits uh, in passenger seat, and you guys begin to take off. Do any, do, do either of you contact the other two or... Oh wait, Scarlett doesn't have a phone. I don't have a phone. <laughs> um, yes, I will. I'll text them, uh, classes out. Uh, doing a tour of some of the domains. How's everything with you two? Okay. Uh, Dom and Mordecai, since you have made it to uh, the East Village um, and then go went back to the Chicago University area, um, you guys are probably en route in that direction. So, as you are making your way there, Mordecai, you get a text from Toledo. I guess it's a group text. Do you apply? Or? 
Um, met with hounds, or met with uh, one echo regarding uh, mutual problem. On route so, yeah. to what's the word I would look for? Coven to see some witches. I'm gonna say, do you mean the? I'm gonna use like triangle and the wizard emoji I swear old dudes don't know how to text these days uh, and I'll, I'll text do you do you need us do you need anything from us How's finishing school? Question. Wait, do you just want to call him? <laughs> Me? The yeah. Cleta loves texting. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dom, you're just riding the bike, by the way. Your phone's like vibrating inside your jacket pocket. Yeah, I'm ignoring it. <laughs> Yeah, if he's asking more questions, I'm like, I don't know what he means by that. Here, uh, call your dad. I'll give the phone to Scarlet. I'll, I'll, I'll hit call. I'll hit dial for Mordecai and give it he's to He's not my dad. I am Scarlet. not talking. And then I just, like, throw the <laughs> phone back to Toledo. <laughs> Whoa, Scarlet. Uh, uh, what's your name? Uh, Frankie says. Why are you throwing phones around? That's not nice. Yeah, it seems like all, both of your friends actually have manners and a sense of purpose and some direction in their life. I don't know what they're doing hanging out with someone like you. Hey, that she's she's nice, okay? What? What? When? She's been through some shit back in Russia. Yeah, her family took what? care of her. Oh shit, this whole time... I never actually hung up the phone, so Mordecai's <laughs> probably heard half of this conversation. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, hang on. Hold that thought. Hey. Uh, no, no, keep yeah, going. school's I've fine. Been, Do you... I've been I swear to learning God, so much I'm about in the, I'm in like a church van full of children right now. I'm my wit's end. Uh, Stop. E everything cool, though? Do you, need to, do you need us to link up after this, or you got to lead? Oh, yeah, no, we're good. Oh, um, <clears throat> Mordecai and Toledo? Actually, just Mordecai. Go ahead and roll your wits and awareness, please. See if you notice. <laughs> Not a high difficulty. Wits and awareness. <laughs> it's not a very high difficulty. I'm just going to play it's... with a stupid, like, opening oh. and oh. closing the windows. Oh, wait. Okay, oh. as you're speaking, as you're speaking oh, uh, on the phone, as you're speaking on the phone with uh, on the other line, you could barely hear Toledo. It seems like there's static going on and maybe construction, you can't tell. Huh. But you guys, you know, you get your words across and um, there's a bit of interference. Know. Interference. Huh. But the text went through fine? The text went through fine. Uh, is there... Am I like... Do the regular yeah, check? Yeah, you can, check? You can still I, speak with, you can still speak with Toledo. At? It's just you might have to like speak louder. Full bars and everything. What area of the city did we just go into? Because I'm in the van with a Lasama, out of game. Uh, <laughs> out of character, he's Celia. <laughs> Celia's right there. So, uh, 
All right, yeah, well, you if you don't need me. us, yeah, you got I, my number. Let us know if something. Sorry. Yeah, what? Bri yeah, and then. Up. Oh, all right. Sorry. Can't. Take Wait. care. <laughs> Service in this city sucks. All right, but yeah, you guys were about to tell me. You've been through some shit in Russia. I want to hear about that. Um, should we tell her? Go ahead. No. You can't say something like, I've been through shit in Russia, and then just not elaborate. Scarlett's boyfriend was really mean. Okay, go on. <laughs> why? He really liked you. I don't know why. What'd he do? What happened? Who's this boy? Was it cute? This, this Bruja. Do you still love him? He's not my boyfriend, the fucking this, Bruja. This, this really creepy Bruja. Well, I swear, I, they're also. He was so. She's got a type. When we went feeding, we went right to a biker bar. First thing she thought of. You should have seen the guy she had. <laughs> very bruja. Her yeah. eyes widen no, and her jaw drops. What? You went to a biker bar, Scarlett? As if it's the first time we've gone to a bar. I but wanted yes, to go first, to the bar. The American bar I've been in. Ah. But again, Kaiser is not my boyfriend. He's a fucking idiot that needs to die. Okay, you wouldn't want to say that out loud, Scarlet. Uh, you might get punished for killing someone here. Yes, yes, yes. Wait, is, yes, is your boyfriend here too? He's not or is he my about, boyfriend. You leave him back in Russia. Oh no, we left him in Russia. Some of his, some weird people took him. Yes. What do you mean, some weird people? She looks towards Scarlet. I don't know. Listen, that guy is just a fucking idiot sabotaging the air. Sabat, yeah, we... Sabat. Oh, was it Sabat? I can't remember the names. For something. Sabbath? I, I, I don't know. I don't nah, Sab that, that. Sabat's right. Sabat's yeah. Right. So we went with them and uh, we ran away here. So you you're here because you're run you're on the run from the sabbat. <gasps> Frankie, you know, shuts her mouth as Brian kind of looks over uh, the rearview mirror, looking outside the, <laughs> the window as well. Oh. And there's just an I mean, if you're silence. in danger, it's a smart thing to tell. I don't know someone who maybe has spent their entire unlife hunting and killing bad vampires. There's worse people to have your back. That's all I'm saying. And if you're on the run for the Sabbat, a Camarilla stronghold like this is a, not the worst place to be. I kind of like you it don't here. Don't have to say anymore. Says. You guys will do all right. So what did you guys do in Russia? Like, what was your thing when you, before this? You all got turned at the same time? Frankie nods. Is that the Sabbat too? Shovelhead stuff? That's what they call this. Yeah, Frankie, just say everything to the creepy priest. We don't know if we can trust or not. Yeah, like I said, you're a real bitch most of the time, but I ain't gonna let anything happen to you. Yeah, no, that's that's rough, and that actually explains a little bit about your your attitude. That's a that's that's a rough way to be introduced to our, our way of life. I, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Oh no, Things... Scarlet wasn't with us. Oh really? Well, that's that's Scarlet's story. I'm not going to pry anymore. I'll let her open up if she feels so inclined later. I'm just glad y'all are all right, and you're uh. You're still, the, you're still with each other. Were you friends before this? Before you got turned? No. Well, making friends, uh, not easy for our kind. It's easy to make uh, acquaintances or partners or 
lackeys, the actual friends, which you guys seem to be. That's 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 a big deal. Try to hang on to that. I'll just turn. I'll just sort of lean into Frankie. She really has some walls up, doesn't she? She's very guarded. She just. You start talking emotions, you could tell it makes her very uncomfortable. That's she's uncomfortable because you're a priest. Oh, she got a bad experience with okay. I'm not a I'm not like a regular priest though, I'm like a cool priest. Oh. So that's, that's all right. Okay. Okay. She shrugs as the snake kind of just goes around her neck and whatnot. And as you, as you both, uh, as Brian kind of pulls up, you would realize that you guys are now in downtown, uh, the downtown district of Chicago. And you pull up to a particular lot. Um, as you do, you would see that this is like a two or three story uh, sort of establishment. There are blue lights that are kind of flashing. Okay, they're not flashing, but they're like pretty much just cascading against the walls of the uh, tiles and whatnot. The tinted glass is also sort of dark blue. Um, and on the very front, as you guys turn the corner uh, in large letterings above the glass doorway, um, you would read it would read the blue velvet. Dom and Mordecai, when you guys finally get to the Chicago Tremere Chantry, located just behind Chicago University. The only reason why you know this location is because of Mordecai. You have contacts, and I imagine they would have sent you directions. But yeah, you eventually end up here in the Chantry on the outside of this place. It's very, it's a very large property. Think of it as uh, maybe the actual Stewart Academy building itself it's about two stories high it looks like a manor it's a long stretch of it on the outside there's about 12 14 feet foot wall brick walls um and they kind of come together into this large 14 uh, foot tall gate iron gate on the outside you would see a lot of markings uh on the walls and pillars itself but with your sense the unseen without a roll you don't need to roll this but with your sense the unseen you can see that this place has lots and lots of glyphs and sigils that seem to glow ever so brightly whenever someone is nearby and those someone is the two of you um i imagine you guys are not in front of the uh, chantry itself mm. or do you have you know you do a little pep talk with each other before you approach the chantry what do we just knock? No, they know we're here. Do you have much experience with these people? You mean like killing them or talking yeah, I might not, them? I mean, if you do have that experience, I wouldn't, I wouldn't lead with that. It, uh, it's they like trading fair. information. They're kind of like Nosferatu, but less about the something. Yeah, don't let any of them poke you with anything. They're probably worse than Toledo with regards to blood collection. Hmm. Well, yeah, I guess we should knock or maybe just walk up to the front door and it'll magically open for us or something. I'm not sure. So walk up to the front door. As you walk up to the front door, indeed, you're correct. It swings open with the both of you. You see those wards uh, kind of glow ever so brightly. Um, and you can see that there's a stone path that leads you towards the steps, uh, towards the actual proper building okay. itself. So that happened. So next, what's going to happen is that a $1,000 bill is going to fall into my hand. Nothing. Looking at the sigils, nothing. Fine. Walk along the path. Just, just awkward silence. <laughs> you hear the bird, the, the crickets chirping on the other <laughs> on the bushes <laughs> nearby. Crickets, crickets. Uh -huh. I figured I had some kind of magic influence, so why not? Ooh, speaking of, yeah, sense the unseen. Um, any 
a spirit. Mm-mm. No, no Excellent. spirits or any visages of specters here, but you do see orbs around this area. White orbs that float around ever so gently. Do you have any idea what those are? Intelligence and occult. I'm gonna make me. Not sure if Mordecai has dealt a lot with these entities, but with is that a crit? Um, that is okay. a crit, and if it's got anything to do with two spirits, successes. it's a specialty. Okay. Uh, with two successes, you could tell that perhaps these are remnants of spirits, well, but they're not actual full full-formed wraiths or specters or any of that, or ghosts for the matter. They're just remnants. Hmm. Are they tethered to anything or fettered? Nothing nothing to your uh, apparent view. Just or immediate floating. view. Just floating there. Just gentle little circles. But as you look around and perhaps are amazed by these little tiny sparkles, the door swings open um, and you would meet this individual. Let me go ahead and pull them up on the screen. You would see uh, this African-American man. He's uh, kind of rugged. His beard is unkempt. Uh, His graying hair is also a little messy. Uh, His bright hazel eyes seem to glow in the darkness as he you know walks out with his cane um he looks at the both of you and he says oh i was expecting two guests tonight yes i've been informed please step inside you have much to speak of should be sad sure why not as you both step into the chantry proper, you would notice that there is a strange feeling of being inside the chantry. It's almost as if there is a fleeting pressure that is maybe pressing on your shoulders or pulling you down somehow, Um, but it doesn't really affect your body too much. He leads you down to the left hallway and he goes into, he opens his door and it leads you into a study. Inside, there is a fake fireplace with fire crackling um, from within. Uh, and there are bookshelves upon bookshelves full of text. In the middle, there is a, you know, two or three uh, seats that you can take comfortably. Um, and he, there is a table right in the middle. On the table itself, you can see that there is a bunch of paperwork, and on top of the paperwork is that same vial full of that white substance that you all so that you all confiscated from that random, uh, not that random, that thin blood. Do you take your seat? He gestures for you too. Sure. I'll stay standing. Okay. You see, Dom kind of crosses arms and stand there as he kind of just looks around, perhaps unamused of the situation. But Mordecai, you take your seat comfortably as as, uh, this individual. He reintroduces himself. I believe we have not met yet officially. Uh, My name is Abraham de Sable. I am the regent of the Chicago Tremere Chantry. Pleased to meet the both of you officially. And unofficial primogen if memory serves. Yes, well, that is a discussion for another time, but technically, yes. True. Well, let's cut to the chase then. What have you learned? I wonder why it was both of you that was sent. I was expecting the hound. The, <clears throat> the Banu Hakim. He's but, teaching finishing school tonight. Well, yes, dreadful, dreadful indeed. Not sure Banu Hakim would kind of want to be in a Tremere Chantry. 
Of course, perhaps that's why he wasn't sent here, but I was told that he had more of these things, these substances. At In least one more that I know of. In any case, there is something strange about this matter. He holds it up, and as he does, you can see that he is, he seems to be pulling, a, using a bit of his blood to will it to remain floating in the air. Very, very strange substance. Different properties, but I cannot seem to analyze it properly along with the help of my other uh, Chantry members. Uh, what's I can make a suggestion on that point. You might want to stop getting it floating around. You might want to take it to a science lab to analyze it, maybe. Oh, yes, that's exactly why um, one of my associates are here. Uh, he claps his hand for a bit as if almost calling for someone. And behind him, there is a study. Uh, excuse me, a door that leads to a study. Another study. Um, and it opens almost like mechanically without ever anyone touching it and who emerges is this particular individual she immediately the both of you are enamored by how beautiful she is she seems to have long flowing dark brown hair bright brown eyes she is wearing a leather jacket with nothing underneath um, and she wears a very, very tight, um, you know, pants um, and some uh, what seems to be combat boots. Um, and she brushes her hair to the side and she says, yes, um, Regent? Oh, yes, Portia. Please meet our associates. Uh, I believe this is Mordecai, uh, one of the Setites, uh, and Mr. McGregor. He is uh, of Clan Bruja. Please, this is my apprentice. Um, she bows to you as she waves her hair a little bit. Um, and she says, Hi, my, my name is Portia. Yes, nice to meet you. She smiles at the both of you and she says, Oh, um, yes, I've, I've gotten some analysis for... Uh, the paperwork uh, for, for the substance. And um, it's not blood sorcery. Well, it is, but it's not. Mm. It's, it's really hard to tell what it is. But from what I've gathered, um, it's very new type of magic. What would you think would account for the the silver aura that holds? Um, if I'm doing this right, and she looks towards uh, Abraham and she gives him a curt nod, approvingly, um, it, it's an aura that resembles that of a kindred. Um, a kindred's. It's she. Uh, if she could sweat, she'd be sweating right now. Um, and she's very nervous. Um, it's it seems to be made out of kindred, the substance. The bl- you mean the blood, uh, or the, uh, the substance um, itself? Um, the powder inside is. Seems to be made out of kindred or kindred vitae. I kind of turn back mm-hmm. over to the region and I'm like, I don't, I'm no expert. I'm pretty strong, but I've never actually hit a thin blood that hard that you've turned to dust. We don't know the process of how they, they've manufactured and- this, but. Yes, Mr. Mordecai, continue. There was those uh, Dom 
the associate could tell you much more about them than I. Um, one of them that we encountered uh, changed uh, bodily, physically, into something grotesque. Yeah, I wouldn't go eating that stuff. We can only assume it had something to do with this stuff. Ooh. They started Freaking. to like... Are there any uh, blood magics that can cause transformation? Mm. They started to mutate and like change foam at the mouth and such and they were just they actually grew physically. Bones elongating stabbing through their bodies. Mm. Mm. Quite interesting indeed. You mentioned the thing blooded. Well, that was yes, what they were before we accidentally killed them all. And they were, a number of them were chained to the walls and very feral. Almost as if some kind of extraction or an experiment of some kind. Which doesn't make sense considering if it's kindred vitae, then you wouldn't use a thin blood. I mean, technically, it's probably the same sort of thing, isn't it? Just a little diluted. Hence the term. This stuff seems very concentrated. So either there's something to do with the magic that uh, can process blood regardless, or if it's thin blood, that might account for a lot of the disappearances. This is rather concerning. I thought the thin bloods were under control. Define under control. I'm new uh, to the city. Is there a problem with the thin bloods? Are they expanding? Are they? Ah, I'm glad you asked, Mr. McGregor. Yes, I can offer you insight regarding this. Yes, and he he just starts going on a complete uh, intellectual lecture regarding Thin Bloods as he even pulls out a book full of notes in it regarding all the Thin Blood activities and stuff going on in the city as well as the country, pretty much relating to Gehenna. Can I borrow that book? He shuts it closed as he says, absolutely not, he says, as he puts, puts it back in the shelf. I'm just saying, like, if they're mostly in the south area of Chicago, that's where I hang out, and I could probably take care of that problem for you. He raises an eyebrow. Well, the scourge has disappeared, and we do need I'm sorry, samples. What? Uh, say again over here. All oh, after incinerators? Don't mind me. I, yes, I, the scourge. has disappeared. It's been about two weeks now since he's reported to the prince. Oh. Last time he was here, he was asking about thin bloods as well. Well, that would have been some need-to-know information that we needed to know about three days ago. Regardless. When you say last time he was here, you mean last time he was here specifically in this building in the Chantry? Yes. It's been two weeks. And then he disappeared because he was uh, coincidentally asking about Thin Bloods? Well, I don't know which one put it that way. He is a scourge after all. And, well, they're very, very deadly. So these Thin, thin Bloods are deadly? Well, if you, what you say is true, this... You're gonna need that book. No, absolutely not, Mr. McGregor. I'm just saying, you want me to help you? Help me help you, is what I'm saying. I was on, I was told you were only here to gather information regarding the results of our testing. Yes, but now we see it's part of a bigger problem. He's right, you know. A problem that you have is a problem that we have. Go ahead and roll. A problem that we can also probably fix. Your casa, a our casa. 
<laughs> go ahead and roll your charisma and persuasion. You can add a plus one because Mordecai is uh, with you. Getting the assist. <laughs> Here, you have advantage. Scroll down there for a bit. Uh, he does have advantage. Sorry, it's persuasion. You were saying? Yep. Charisma, Charisma persuasion. persuasion. I should really be rolling this. <laughs> yeah, you really should. But so <laughs> plus one, one for Dom. Yep, plus one Don't for Dom. Your... Would you like to re-roll two dice? <laughs> oh, that was a crit though. It's only one ten. Roll. Oh, it's only 110. Okay. Uh, What's well, two successes plus a hunger success? Is that something? Yeah, it's three successes. Eh, I want to go for the whole kid caboodle, though. Let's go for the whole. We rolled two dice. Thing. Uh, Rick, you have to let stop letting us talk. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, Power reroll on the two. Oh, and he crits. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right, with five successes on a crit. Damn. Abraham ponders to himself. He looks over to Portia. She Help nods. Me. Help so you. subtly. She simply nods to him. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Well, you do make a great point. I Mr. mean, she had me at hello, but help me help you she looks over at your direction and she brushes her hair to the side once again damn a ram then says i have an idea portia do you mind accompanying this mcgregor in his investigation and in return he hands over the book to her and he, he takes out a few papers of course he gives her the rest of the notebook that can help us how's that sound Portia she nods her head giving a weak smile to him although she holds on dearly to the notebook I kind of lean over a little bit to Mordecai it's like I kind of like these Tremere types they know who's in charge Portia please and before she nods her head as she looks towards you and she shuffles over. Now, I, I strongly advise you ask the prince for permission to investigate further regarding the other thin bloods, as I believe you four were tasked to just find out about Mr. Watts' death, yes? Theoretically. That would mean that we are no longer tasked with anything by the prince because most of that has been solved. Oh, wonderful, Mr. Mordecai. Yes, please take on more tasks. And perhaps that's why Alexa had sent you this way. In any case, you are free to um, ask Portia for any advice regarding the current situation. She will be most useful. So is she killing the- Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thank you for Great. your trust in us, Regent. Portia will keep me updated. Have a good evening, gentlemen. Portia Stand up. Leads, leads you on uh, to, uh, onto the other the hallway of the actual place, um, outside of uh, Abraham's study. And she turns towards the both of you and she says, I look forward to working with the both of you very politely. Now, here's the question, Dom. Is she working with us or us? She's right here still. She knows enough. Are, are you working I'm sure with you've us been informed. or us? No, 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 no. I mean, the rest of our coterie. Oh, yeah. From the sounds of it, she's working with us. Well, it's the two of you that were tasked to do this, so I assume. But I do find, I, I do find that 
uh, what's his name? Father Father Toledo and that one Miss Leanne. I've heard about both of them. And I'm very curious about them. We could introduce you. Your I eyes lighten up. Her eyes lighten up at those words as she says, I would love to meet both of them. You might not get on too well with Scarlet. She's a bit of an asshole. But you'll love uh, Holy Toledo. You'll, you'll probably like Toledo. He's a Banu Hakim. Oh, oh she shivers she at the thought of famous. working with a Banu Hakim. Oh, I thought he was a ministry member. I apologize. No, no, I'm the He's ministry. a ministry member. I'm just a simple businessman. I see. Oh, yes, I've heard of you, Mr. Mordecai, you and your liberties. My service to the public. I think they called them body houses back in the day. I would love to. Houses of ill repute. I would absolutely love to get a closer look with your establishment, she says. You are more than welcome at any time. As long as he's around and she kind of gestures to Dom. Absolutely. In any case, I, we do have an yeah, assignment to finish. To. Right. So should we collect Where you? We? Uh, yes. If Are we doing more work this evening or tomorrow? Well, that is up to you, the both of you gentlemen. I do have some of my studies to continue, some of books to read. But I am usually free at this time of the night. What time is it now? If you look over your watch, it is around 12.30. Or maybe one o'clock. We got time now. We can find the rest of our coterie. At least make really calling it that though. I mean, that seems like a group Camarilla stick in the mud type. Lumhouse. Portia leans over as she says, Yeah, you got Camarilla, Mr. McGregor. <laughs> uh, no. She brushes her hair to the side. <laughs> That's interesting. Oh, speaking Is of Domino. We do have to, uh, there was the mention by Alex, the, uh, Alexa to inform the Anarchs. That's something you need to do alone. She didn't say inform them of what? She didn't say that. I, that was me. Oh, no. sorry. Rewind. Nope. Didn't say that. Sorry. Although technically. Huh. Yeah, we should rally rally up the rest of the... Rally the troops? Troops, I guess. I don't know. I don't really see Scarlet fighting too much. Oh, are you planning to uh, take out a bunch of thin buds? I, I would... I mean, eventually. I would love to bring one of them here for, for study. Sure, they're breakable enough. We could probably... I mean... Throw in the back of a band which, is or curious, which I'm curious about is why you're so eager to destroy them when they're technically a part of your sect. I didn't say it was Anarch either. Oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize, Mr. McGregor. Do you, who do you affiliate yourself then with? Then? Nobody. The team that pays the most. My own self. Free agency. She plays with her hair a bit more as she looks at you with utmost curiosity, Dom. She lingers, her eye lingers on you for the longest time. And she finally speaks up and she says, I'm sure a strong bruja like you would be, well, will do well in either direction 
I'm just watching this go down. Yeah. I, like I, um, I'm not... I think we should be in touch. All right. She says. Down to go. There. Do you take Portia with you? Or... Is she I mean, following sure. you with us? No, no. She, she's just watching the both of you. Very, very curiously. Right. Come on. This will be interesting. So you bring we go her to with the parking you? lot. Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, right. If nothing else, we can introduce, make introductions. Okay. All right. All right. So you just head over in the direction where Scarlet and Toledo are. Sure. Here's a question. Where does Portia? Is she taking her own vehicle? Coming with depends, one depends on uh, the both of you. Uh, for some strange, Mordecai, this is very strange. She does not. She's not interested in you. She's more interested in Dom, which is very right. strange to you because you're more of the social type. But for some, for some reason, she's she. Her eyes are on Dom. It's the leather jacket. Chicks dig the leather oh, jacket. <laughs> Pass a fucking no. So if if uh, if Dom I'm, uh, lets her if nothing else, I'm on, flabbergasted. Yeah, yeah. It kind of hurts a bit of your ego, Mordecai, as this extremely oh. beautiful Tremere is not right paying here. any attention to you. Instead, it's <laughs> the Grammy Bruja um, that's uh, has a Harley Davidson that she likes for some reason. But yeah, it's like I'm uh, invisible. She, she hops on uh, Domino's bike, um, and uh, both of you take your leave. Meanwhile, up back in the range. Out of game question: Does um, <clears throat> does Mordecai have any of like the looks merit? Yep. Which is he beautiful or stunning? Uh, I'm a beautiful person. That's good to know. Toledo have, appreciates beauty. I need to work I've that in. I didn't, I didn't know you facts. actually had like the merit for it. Scarlet's stunning. I don't, I don't, yes, we established that. I don't think Dom has beauty, right? Dom doesn't have beauty. Oh. <laughs> I would. Uh, I wish Dom, he secretly. Portia's very interested in Dom. Okay, back um, at the uh, blue velvet. Back at the ranch. Uh, Dom is confused. Uh, yeah, he is. Uh, all right, so Mordecai is confused. Both uh, the group of fledglings follow Celia and Toledo as you all push past uh, the line that is out. So actually, there's no line. It's a Monday. Um, but as you guys walk in the establishment, um, it seems that you guys are easily let in by the bouncers. Um, Celia gives a nod to the bouncer and you are all let into this lounge type establishment. Everything is in the hues of blue and purple. There are plush leather seats everywhere in the center uh, off center uh, area of the place there is a spiral staircase that leads towards the second floor mezzanine um, that stretches from east and then west there are a bunch a bunch of business types here young yuppies uh lots of people who just probably got off of work and are now just chilling uh relaxing here in this lounge and Drinks are definitely being poured across the table and things like that. Uh, expensive drinks, that is. Everyone is dressed all business-like. But as Celia walks in, she would turn to the to you, Toledo, and she says, Miss Stewart said you have to make yourself known to whoever owns the domain. And this is the domain of uh, a Malkavian by the name of Miss Bronwyn. Yes, the rule of a... Tradition of hospitality. I'll, uh, I'll do that. Uh, Mal- wait, wait, wait. This is a Malkavian joint? She nods. Okay. This will probably be way more fun than I thought. I thought this was just a normal, another Toreador bullshit. Okay. Uh, do you know where we find Why her? it's supposed to be fun? You ever hung out with a Malkavian? No. The, the, no, this is I trial guess. by fire. I, I I don't even know how to warn you about this. Uh, okay. Actually, I, I'll introduce myself, and then uh, 
Scarlett, how about you introduce yourself next? Start getting a getting a feel for this sort of thing. Maybe you can then introduce your friends as well. If everyone's comfortable with that, Scarlett speaking for the students. You're going to be a student a group leader for this field trip. Ugh. Wipe that fucking grimace off your face. I swear to God. Hey. You get her, get her a sash like the uh, school crossing guard. <laughs> I don't want to sound like an old man, like, oh, you lazy kids. But every time someone asks you to do something, it's him and hawing. To be fair, Mr. Toledo, you are sounding like an old man. Celia says to you. <laughs> Bronwyn wouldn't like that. Please don't yell at her club. She likes to have a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> She's hey, upstairs. I do too. All right, let's go. And in the future, thank you. If, if, if I start acting too curmudgeon let me know in a respectful way. I like to stay hip. All right, let's find her. Okay, as you uh, as you go upstairs, um, you would immediately notice a woman by the railing of the mezzanine, just observing everything. She seems to be in one hand uh, drinking perhaps a martini, and the other hand a uh, cigarette, and she's just smoking and casually just smiling at everything you can immediately tell that she has a sort of presence here as all of the servants that crowd around her bow to her and you know be polite and whatnot but she seems to be just very very relaxed that's almost as if she knows this place better than anyone and she does as this is probably miss bronwyn she looks towards your direction she you know she shakes a bit of her brown hair off the side you revealing a you know very European, Western European features. She gives you a polite smile, a curious smile, as you bring all of these students upstairs. Uh, Miss Bronwyn, is it? Yes, that is indeed me. Hello, slide bow. My name is Toledo, Banu Hakim. I'm here with uh, the class from the Stuart Freeman Academy. I believe you're expecting us. A little field trip. <laughs> she smiles wickedly. Well, I thought tonight was going to be another boring evening, but looks like the entertainment's arrived. And this might be, she looks to you, Scarlet. Uh, I am Scarlett Lian of Gran Toreador, and these are my classmates. This is Frankie of Clan Gangrel, um, Brian oh. of Clan Nosferatu. Oh, I love what you've done to your face, and, she says to Brian. And um, Celia of Clan Kativ. Kativ? Kativ? No, no, dear. She's not Kadif. It's not right, Celia. She smiles. Celia just nods her head obediently. Welcome to the Blue Velvet, my dears, where you can ease all of your worries and let loose. Not too loose, though, because, well, this is still a respectable establishment, and lots and lots of people here come drink both alcohol and other things. So, what can I get you all started with? Don't be shy. I know you're I all am hungry. Old. For once, I'm not. But, uh, students, y'all need a bite to eat? Yes. Menu! Menu! She says out loud. This is actually and a good lesson. Pay attention here. This is uh, Miss Bronwyn's domain. And as you can see, she has a reliable food source here. Mind explaining how you got this set up? <laughs> Let's just say I have context, Mr. Toledo. But yes, menu! She snaps one more time as one of the uh, one of the waitresses comes over and brings her a menu. 
It is a black book, and within there seems to be lots and lots of what seems to be laminated paper, and she hands it over to you, Toledo. What do I see? As you open it, you would notice that there is a a wide selection of flavors, ranging from 18-year-olds to 60-year-olds, blood types, resonance, humors, you name it. All right, students, this is a, you never seen anything quite to this extent. This is impressive. You got all this just ready to go? For a price, of course. I don't understand we're here on a field trip. She knows how to run a domain. You know what? I, you know what? I'll take one of these. I'm just going to point to something. Two of these. Y'all want anything? Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm going to order for you. And I'm (laughs) just pick a few out, mostly at random. Things that maybe seem more interesting and uh hand it to the whoever brought the menu over excellent you got all that she nods to the waitress excellent excellent indeed good choice by the way she smiles at you wickedly once again toledo and she looks at the students so what can I? What else can I do for you as we wait? Do any of you guys have questions for Miss Bromwyn, especially concerning uh, running a domain? Brian raises his hand, and a whole blown out conversation with this Malkavian occurs as um, things are happening. Uh, Scarlet, if you choose to stay quiet, uh, you, you can, but you can jump in at any time. But it seems like Brian and Frankie are very curious about the situation and how they're getting the food and things like that. Yeah, like, how do you not break the masquerade? <laughs> I do get that question a lot, young one. And, well, I have my ways. After all, I am Miss Bronwyn. And of course, this doesn't mean anything to the either of you, as you don't know who she is yet. But Celia just keeps her head down, as you would notice that she didn't order a single thing on the menu. Eventually, she would usher you over to the booths that are nearby. She would ask each of you, each of you to sit in, you know, separate booths. Actually, you can double up with Frankie, most likely uh, Scarlett. Toledo, you're sitting with Brian. Um, and Celia just remains outside with Bronwyn. Two or three humans walk in from a secret door somewhere. And each of them are seated next to each of you. The curtains close. Scarlett, you share, you are p- perhaps sharing a meal with a 22-year-old man. He seems to be of Asian descent. Uh, He's wearing very, very business savvy clothing um, and he's very focused on something. In the menu, he ordered, I believe, sanguine. Did you order a sanguine resonance? He seems to be in awe of the both of you women as he seems to be immediately entranced by your immediate presence. Um, he doesn't say a word, but he's just smiling at the both of you. Do you feed? Yes. Okay, how many blood points are you taking from this individual? Two? Okay. All right. You begin to feed. Toledo, um, you could have had any, uh, you know, you could have chosen any resonance type or any individual, but, uh, just out of curiosity, what did you order from Miss Bronwyn's menu? Uh, if resonance is an option, I also would go with sanguine. Okay. Also would have ordered an actual beverage as well. They're served fresh, and this is exactly what she means. 
Eventually, a, another individual rolls in, um, and you and Brian share uh, what seems to be a mid twenties uh, young woman who is very much intoxicated, perhaps can't tell, but she's very, very passionate about things. You can see it in her eyes as she looks at you and she smiles and she says, I love cowboys. And she, you know, kind of just sits next to you. And I imagine you feed. How much um, blood do you take? I, 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 I'm actually not hungry. Well, I have one hunger and I'm not going to kill her. So I'm actually, if she seems like she might be under the influence of something, I think I'm going to play it safe and not feed. I don't okay. want to show up back at school drunk with these kids. All right. Let's catch. All right. And uh, yeah, if you you can take the resonance if you want. But uh, yeah, Brian begins to feed. Soon after, um, they are all the both humans are ushered out somewhere else and they're stored somewhere else. The curtains open and Bronwyn stands there with a wicked smile on her face once again as she says, enjoy yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your hospitality. Oh, of course. Of course. Usually I would keep it at a minimum of one meal per group. But since you ordered two, I think it's time for the children to learn about boons. What are boons? Well, we're not actually to that lesson yet, so, <laughs> damn. Yes. What are boons, Mr. Father Toledo? Well, it's Father Professor Toledo. <sighs> boons are what the Camarilla use as currency. Uh, it's a favor that you owe one another, and it's taken very, very seriously. They come in different uh, levels of severity, let's mm-hmm. say. So example, uh, normally offering someone food in your own domain, especially a well-stocked club like this, typically you wouldn't even need a boon. That's just basic manners. But certain kindred like to uh, have a lot of power and they have that power because they squeeze every drop of it when they get a chance. And then things like this might mean now that she fed us, we, just me, will owe her a favor. I'm sure a very minor one. Isn't that right, Miss Bronwyn? Yes, only a minor boon because of she snaps at Frankie. She's taken quite too much from that one individual. Out of character, Frankie took one dot and Scarlet took two. So that's put that guy in a very bad state. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Let him... uh, (laughs) They can survive three. They're just in a bad spot. Yeah, no, let, let them drink. That's fine. Um, like I said, I'm responsible for them, so I'll be a, I'll be owing you the boon, if that's all right. She thinks to herself, and you see her Malkavian eyes roll as she says, you and Miss Willows. Who the hell's Miss Willows? She points at the gang girl, Frankie. It's Frankie. How about this? Brand new fledgling, shaken at the knees gang girl. Not sure what sort of boon you're going to get out of that. Or Bono Hakeem, who is very good at what he does. And I'm sure you have a idea of what I do. So instead of two minor boons, how about I just owe you one a, a little bit higher? Mm, she takes her time thinking. Mm, 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 mm. She looks to her left, looks to her right, and she takes her ex- like excruciating amount of time deciding what to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, no, I think I like the fledglings. Like, I like having them visit me. It's because you're old, Mister Toledo. Scarlet, if you don't shut the fuck. So what? <laughs> <laughs> 
And Miss Stewart is okay with you extorting her students for boons? The Venture won't have a problem with this? She looks towards Celia. And Celia nods. You don't need a roll for this, but you're probably set up. It is at this okay. point that uh, Mordecai and Dom, you guys were going to Toledo, right? And Scarlet? Yeah. That they walk in through the doors and you'd immediately see a bunch of kindred upstairs by the mezzanine, in the mezzanine, at the mezzanine? Mordecai, I, I imagine you've been here before. Uh, this I place, imagine I'm probably supplying her. No, uh, she, she her supplies from you. Somewhere. She supplies you with uh, the blood. Um, and uh, if you want to know more about her, go ahead and roll your intelligence and streetwise or intelligence and politics. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry, this is acting up. And let's see if you know more than just her being the owner of this establishment. And she does play a very vital role in Chicago. Okay. With two successes, Bronwyn, Bronwyn has a lot of control over the blood trade. And being her supplier, or you being the supplyee, or you should supplies blood for you, as most of the people that are tied up in your place come from her. You would also run by the organization called the Circulatory System. <laughs> I imagine the both of you walk in, go up the stairs, and you are once again reconvened with Scarlet and Toledo. Seems like Toledo is having a hard time negotiating with uh, Miss Bronwyn here. Ah, more guests? And they've brought a Tremere with them. Perfect. As the both of you look over, you would notice that Dom and Mordecai have brought Another like leather jacketed individual. She seems to have very long, dark hair, very beautiful Greek features. Um, and she, without a doubt, is the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Scarlet looks I'm like sorry. those two are replacing you already. Sorry, I'm the I'm the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, so <laughs> <laughs> I... So that would be a minor and a trivial boon, she says uh, with a smile. Mr. Mordecai, how... Put it on the tab. <laughs> how interesting to meet you here once again. How are you tonight? Ron Wynn, I have never been better. Care for a drink? Just... You know I never leave without drinking. Please, you know what to do. Booths Something are empty. Hmm. Something sanguine. Maybe a thirties. Maybe an artist of some kind. She nods her head, and she uh, gestures for you to move into one of the booths. Oh, and Mr. McGregor, I've heard much about you. Yeah, probably. I didn't know you were acquainted with Miss Portia here. Just met her. Hmm. Interesting. I In guess case, I don't have to introduce you to... No. I, we know of each other. Isn't that right, Portia? She nods her head, not really paying attention to anything. Her eyes seem transfixed. On Dom still. I kind of feel like a really small worm on a big fucking hook. <laughs> Scarlet, 
Toledo. Hey, I'm in Mordecai, my man. And you got a friend? Portia. It's Carolyn. This is Portia of Glen Tremere. Just get I heard. Uh, they let you take one home? Wait, what? Her intellect is on loan from the Chantry. What's a Tremir? Oh, I could tell you all about that at a, a different time. Like I'm him, sure but not you violent. Can. She says to you, Toledo, I'm sure you can. And you feel your own blood kind of boil in this moment as she makes that remark as you know well enough the history between the Tremere and the Banu Hakim. And this tension is of course sensed by everyone in this room as uh, she quickly turns towards Scarlet with a smile and she says, mm, I'd like to have a word with you at some point, Miss Leanne. I like your jacket. Oh, thank you. I like it too. That's me. I like yours. So, sort of. Thank you. Thank you. She says politely. She immediately gathers the four of you. Um, Mordecai, your food hasn't arrived yet, but uh, she gathers the four of you and she says, So, what is your next step into this investigation? Well, now that we've Not got entirely the information, sure. now that we've got the information about that, we're going to try to figure out what it is, right? That's what have the what have the Tremere figured out so far? It's blood magic, Assuming but you, it's not blood magic. You explain what the Tremere told you, or do you keep anything back so we don't have to actually? No, I'll just tell you what the Tremere told us, that it's blood magic, but not blood magic. Kind of, sort of, maybe. That it was made, of made kindred, out of vampires. But it's not yeah. made of kindred. That... Yeah. That. Uh, so you're, you're a lot going to figure it out. What do you, what piece are you missing? Actually, out of curiosity, before we go on, or The prince want you to help us, or is the Tremere just sticking their nose in this? She looks towards well, Dom. I just, I was assigned to assist Mr. McGregor in this instance. I'm in yeah. Apparently, the Tremere Regent likes me, and I think. Orsha also likes you. Yeah, probably. Good, uh, I'm a likable guy. He was, I mean, quite eloquent. You saw how I dealt with that guy that grabbed his pants. Mm. Yeah, I've seen you, how you've dealt with a lot of people. That's why I'm trying to put my, wrap my head around all this right now. Okay. Did you I was threaten? a witness. Did you threaten the Tremere? He was amazingly eloquent. I didn't threaten anybody in there. I was so proud. Even, they even sent along the nice book. They sent the book? So either Dom, something insane happened to Dom, or uh, Premier have let you believe that they, you convinced them. They're here because they want to be here. And Dom, like, I look at Portia like, I get it. <laughs> but I'm sure you know how that could get you into trouble. Didn't Bobby say something about you having a girlfriend, too? Uh, don't bring Bobby oh. into this, man. Bobby's <laughs> in enough shit. <laughs> All right. All right, Miss Tremere. Miss Portia. Uh, so uh, you figured out what you could figure out. What do you need now? Well, I was hoping to go over the notes with all of you in a more private location, unless you want to do it here in front of Miss Bronwyn. And you see yeah, him look over your shoulders, and you see her smiling at the both of at the four of you. It is at this point Mordecai someone taps you on the shoulder. Are... And excuse me, 
Mm-hmm. I'll be right back. You are able to feed. Uh, Continue. Sorry. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. not sanguis here. I, I'm just generally really lost as to this conversation, and I would like to go back to my group. Scarlet, we are your group. If we don't figure this out, the prince will kill you. I, I, what? What are, what are you confused about? I get that they're your friends and you'd rather hang out with them. And I am... You ever do like a group project in school and there's always that one motherfucker who like doesn't want to do any of the work and then when it's time to turn it in, they stand up there and like wait to do it too. we hit the wall. That's you. Yeah, but we hit the wall. Hit the wall. We, nah, we got our next step. We've acquired samples as you know which means we got some things we can work on and figure out more about I don't even know half the terms that you're using yes i'm curious if you acquired any more than just the white samples remind me to explain to you scarlet that when you hit a wall sometimes if you hit the wall hard enough the wall falls (laughs) over you gotta teach i swear to god these nuggets of wisdom are infinite So, go say goodbye to your little friends, and then come back over here. Okay. We'll let the Malkavians deal with them for the night. Um, okay. I mean, we, we should, maybe we could just talk outside in the limo. I don't want to, I'm responsible for them. Actually, yeah, Scarlet, you know what? If you want to, if you want to be group leader and you want to stay here with your friends, that means if anything bad happens, it's on you. I'm okay with that. I'll come You're going to be right outside me. having a quick chat. Aren't you the one who's in it's charge to you. for this? You just leave your charges here. But okay, if that's what you want. I'm Put asking if you can handle it. If you if you can't handle it, that's fine. You could come with us and I'll take care of it. But no, if you can, no, if you're a big okay. girl, it's this okay. is your chance to prove you it. Guys go. They're in the hands of the Malakavians. What could possibly go wrong? All right. Okay. You Thank you, Scarlet. All right. Let's go to the limo and talk. I can't leave these motherfuckers alone for too long. What are those little shit said? Never mind. I'm going to get into that later. All right. So I assume I'm out. Yeah. Uh, you've just finished feeding and you've ma- managed to catch the last of bits of this conversation. Limo. Yeah, I'm just like I'm apparently going to my group to the other students. Okay. You you find uh Frankie, Brian, and Celia just looking around the place on the mezzanine, uh just admiring all the lights and stuff. Oh, before we go, I will sort of pull Scarlet in be like bonus points if you could figure out what the fuck Celia did she set us up she's working with the milk figure out what's going on there's that look again I want to smack her (laughs) and then I go (laughs) are you gonna try and smack me because if you do I'm gonna try and stop you no 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 He's just saying, he's just mumbling to himself like a grumpy old man. Okay, so do you, you go speak to the group of neonates? Neonates. Oh, excuse me, fledglings. <laughs> <laughs> We're neonates now? Well, okay, yeah. I I approach the group and, well, look for Celia, especially. She's just there. She's just standing there. She seems to be having a conversation with Frankie and Brian. They're just, they're just chilling. Um, Celia, Frankie, can we go to the women's bathroom or something? I need to fix my hair. <laughs> um. Okay. They both say, nodding. Brian's just standing there, like. Okay. You can wait outside, Brian, if you want. He shrugs his shoulders. And you find a nearby restroom on the first floor. You enter. I imagine Dom 
Mordecai and Talita are also on the first floor along with Portia. We'll get to that in a moment. But yeah, as you get into the bathroom, uh, Scarlett, you're now with uh, Celia and Frankie. I make sure there's nobody inside by like opening all the doors. <laughs> and then like you... ushering anybody inside to go out, like out. You knock on. <laughs> Yeah, every, there's there's someone in, in one of the stalls, but yeah, you usher them out um, and you are left with Celia and Frankie. I tell Brian, like, can you like not allow people in for a while? Uh, okay. Just stand there, it's fine. Okay, and then I turn to Celia. You said you were Katif. What the fuck? I I am. Then what did that? What's her name, Miss Bronwyn? Say you're not. I don't have a sire, Scarlet. That's what make Katif Katif. I don't. I don't know what I am. I I, I was. But I, I don't know. I, I look. Miss Stewart found me, okay. And I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what my clan's disciplines are. I, I don't. Why are you even asking this? What do you owe, Miss Bronwyn? Why, why is there a boon? It's the way they purchase and sell things, Scarlet. Money doesn't matter. In kindred society. Then what do you owe her? I don't owe her anything. Then why do I feel like we're set up here? This was a test. For who? All of you. Is it from Miss Stewart or is it from Miss Bronwyn? Miss Stewart. Who else? Scarlett, you have to understand, Miss Stewart is a very smart person. She she knows what she's doing. Fucking been through. Uh all right. I have no idea what the test is about unless you tell me. No? She shakes her head. No. Okay, one last thing about your clan. What can you do? She looks at Frankie. Um, and she looks around, but she doesn't feel comfortable. I, I, don't, I don't know, Scarlett. I, please don't Celia, we are corner here me like to this. Help. We are here, here to help you, but it's hard to help you if you're helping me. I'm. You're the one that's new here. This. Why? Why? Why are you being accusative, accusatory? Is it because of that, Bruja? Did he put you up to this? No. Which one of your dads did then? They're not my dads. They're not my dads. The. Uh. Why does this matter now? We, I thought we were getting along just fine. We did, we did. It's the... Look, I, don't, I don't know what you want from me, okay? I just, please, don't ask about... Don't ask about how I got here. I, I used to be a journalist, but that's, that's it. That's all I'm gonna say. If 
you say so. Okay. Let's go. As she walks up uh, front, as she wants to get out of there eagerly, you would notice the shadow is once again dancing around her back. Actually, like I close the door as she tries to open it. You said you deal with shadows, right? That's what you said. You do something with the shadows. I didn't say anything like that, Scarlet. She says without looking at you. She's just standing in front of the door, back against you. I back towards you. Okay. Do you just keep her there, or...? No, I let... I, I you you like feel a bit of that tension there, Scarlet. Um, she turns towards you in this very moment. You're gonna be like this ever since, uh, from now on. There's a, there's a quick change in her, um, demeanor. I step back. I was just curious. She blinks once. She blinks twice. In the third blink, you can see nothing but darkness in her eyes. Don't go to places where you're not invited. You see the shadows begin to ripple around her. And then she blinks again and she snaps out of it as she says, we should get going. She turns around, opens the door like nothing happened, and leads the way, leaving you and Frankie there. Frankie is in horror at the moment. I guess we're dealing with the Las Sombras again. Let's Frankie, go, Frankie. Frankie just stares at you and she says, What's a La Sombra? You know those. Let's go. I'll, ex uh, I'll let Father Toledo explain that. Okay. Yes, I meanwhile, have to tell them that later. Meanwhile, um, while this conversation is happening, Toledo, Mordecai, Dom, you guys are now with Portia, just on the first floor. Is there any conversation to be had? or? Oh, we just had no limo, I think. Oh, okay, you're in the limo? Yeah, is there any conversation that you guys are having? So you say you need a... Let's say I have a sample of something a little more than a, what you had. I had a sample of one of these actual creatures that uh, resulted from taking that stuff. Think you could do something with that? Oh, I'm... Very curious about what you have, uh, Mr. Toledo. Um, but I'm only a neonate. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Abraham can do something about this. Well, I think he means in general. Like you, we give it to you. You give it to the Tremere. the royal you. Oh, oh, of course. I I can work something out with some people. I think Sun Chi was the first to figure out there with the, about the Silver Aura. Uh, our boy Mordecai figured that out too. And I figured out that there was blood in this stuff. So far, you haven't found, discovered anything that we didn't really already know. So I keep trying to figure out a way for the Tremere to be useful in all this. Well, I don't know if you know this, but that's not blood. Whatever is in that vial. What those is are, it? Those are the remains of a kindred. Yes, she mentioned it's made from kindred. That's an interesting form of diablery. Okay. You'd know all about that, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. And I'll flash a fang at her. 
No diablerie I've ever seen has resulted in something like that, though. My concern is not so much the diablerie, because uh, let's put aside the fact that this might be just the dust of, uh, or the skin flakes of some kindred. I'm more concerned about the bonding. The fact that someone is making this, someone is making kindred blood and kindred uh, body parts into some kind of narcotic. I, I mean, that explains they had benefit? whites chined up in the basement. So I guess we understand, I guess, part of the supply chain a little bit. But yeah, who's at the top? I see what you're saying, Mordecai. Who's... Cause that's that's risky. Killing our kinds just to push them in flop houses. Because we but didn't actually see no one's anything going, scientifically there. Or no one's going to miss there, the thin they? bloods. The thin bloods are the ones taking it, though. This isn't made from thin bloods, at least from what we can well, tell. It the could be, whites I guess. are coming from somewhere. It also begs the question, how advanced is this particular protocol? How refined is this narcotic? Are they going to then experiment with uh, something of, say, more concentrated uh, solution? At which point, uh, because Ms. Portia and uh, her mentor, Abraham, also mentioned that the Scourge has gone missing. As of two weeks Sorry, what? ago. Yeah, it's the same thing. That was information that was need to know that we should have known about three days ago. Absolutely. All right. By sheer coincidence. <laughs> of course. So who benefits from the thin bloods? finding out a way to sniff up Sweet. kindred and maybe they're evening the playing field because that thing that happened as a result I would sort of touch my my abdomen where the thing stabbed into me with the claws so that, that, that fucking stung and normally your run of the mill thin blood wouldn't be able to do shit to me and I felt that Hmm. Yeah, they, they Go ahead. sort of seemed like they were able to fight, but I don't know. They're all squishy to me, really. Portia all right. begins to flip over her notebook, and for some strange reason, she's only sharing it with Dom. She's sitting next to Dom in this large limo, um, and she's only showing you, Dom, about this stuff. And she's flipping over... Uh, pages after pages about thin bloods um go ahead and roll your intelligence and your academics or your occults only one of you in this particular moment you can add plus four dice it has to do with the occult i'm probably best suited i don't know yeah i, don't I, have, six what dots. It is. I have six dots intelligence and occult intelligence, intelligence and occult right? Only one of you, yeah. and you can add plus four. Intelligence and occult. I'm a four if it's got nothing to do with spirits. If it's spirits, then I'm way higher. Probably tell you that. The I, best bet I got six. Um, yeah, I'm going to surge because it's about time I got hungry. Hold you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Toledo so. starts looking in the occult book and starts bleeding. <laughs> oh no! With like, stigma. Oh uh, no! What's in all the book? knowledge? <laughs> Holy crap! That is a lot of successes. Okay, with seven successes, uh, Toledo, you know you're not looking at the book as Portia seems to be. You know, just every time you look over, she you know holds it up and only Dom can see it, um, and it seems that. She is trying to help you out, guys out, but not 
really. But with those seven successes, you are able to communicate with each other and find out more about the Thin Blood stuff. The first thing you guys would have figured out because of those seven successes is that, indeed, she might be correct about, you know, this the vial, uh, not full of just blood. It is perhaps kindred remains, specifically kindred ashes. The second thing that you guys figure out in this moment as you all converse is that this doesn't this what they're using is perhaps blood sorcery, but a different type of blood sorcery, maybe with a relation to these. Thin bloods. Immediately, you all, no, not immediately, but eventually, all of you would piece together that this isn't blood sorcery. This is alchemy. And thin blood alchemy is something that's very rare, at least to your knowledge, as you are on un Scylla, and it's not very common. But with this information that's being thrown around and what you've seen so far, this is 100% alchemy that is perhaps illegal as you all know that thin bloods are the sign of one of the signs of Gehenna and they could be heavily heavily prosecuted for the use of this magic you would also know that there are only a few thin bloods permitted in the Camarilla if they're even permitted Portia tells you all of this as she holds up that notebook, you know, kind of away from Toledo. Well, we're starting to put the uh, put the pieces together. Um, Mordecai's question is probably the most important one. Who's benefiting from this? And, uh, I'll see what I can do to figure out maybe some of the some of the some of the other steps. I know a few thin bloods. Thanks for your help, Portia. Maybe we'll uh bring you back in when we have more to go off of. She smiles at you, Toledo, as she shuts the book. And she says, I'm sure I'll be seeing the three of you more often nowadays. And I'm looking forward to it very, very much. And we will end the session here. Mordecai wants to say something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, that was way out of character for her. <laughs> she was just sheepish little thing. Mm -hmm. And suddenly she's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was all right. That was <laughs> that's your problem, Dom. <laughs> yeah, it's swell. Yeah, you're Thanks. your girlfriend. <laughs> now your you girlfriend's got crazy eyes. It's like Dom's got a new uh, Tremere girlfriend. <laughs> let's uh, let's see where this goes in the next episode. But yeah, uh, thank you guys uh, for tuning in and watching us play. Uh, my name is Louis. It's storyteller for Call of the Abyss. Um, and you guys can find me at Crescent's BTM storytelling for uh, these wonderful. People. Mike. What do you mean, you people? Oh, my name is Mike. I was playing Mordecai. You can catch my cosplay pre COVID stuff at, at Canadian Captain America. You can catch me occasionally on uh, the Vancouver by Night channel, uh, playing, uh, guesting as Julian Mendrick and causing trouble. Uh, you can catch me also on Wednesdays playing. Um, D and D, Mike. Reckoning, D and D. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and here on Tuesdays, and a possible soon to be announced uh, D and D game in the weeks to come. I'm Steve. I'm the storyteller for Vancouver by Night. Uh, usually we do things on Saturdays, uh, but we are in hiatus for the Vancouver adjacent game, which is usually on the Level Up Dice channel. We do that Saturdays at 3 p.m. PST, uh, which then will lead into my regular game at Vancouver by night, which is uh, at 6 p.m. PST. So we basically just raid from one game into the other, but we are on hiatus for the adjacent game, which will be back in, I believe, two weeks. So 
that will be kind of a fun time for everybody. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to pass it on down over to uh, the lead. I am Bully, the storyteller for Table Goth. I'm a player in this game, and I play with Table of Horrors on their Wednesday Victorian Age game. Um, we will be starting Cults of the Blood Gods in the next soon. I forgot our exact date. Keep an eye out for that. That'll have Nasrabu. That'll have Nola Fenger, who runs uh, for River Region, and some of our Table Goth people. That'll be happening soon. Otherwise, check out our YouTube, where our tutorials are going to start rolling out as well. And a potential Monster Hearts thing. Speaking of the YouTube, though, for Bully, check out the all of their stuff, because it's awesome. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Come Ooh, on. The do nice, it. I'll put the, the new <laughs> No Kindred Hungry on there as well. No Kindred Hungry. No kindred hungry. Expired on the VOD, so I'll throw that on the YouTubes. Mm. Uh, and I am Rena. I... I'm the overlord. Uh, I've got a game, another game called Midnight's in Metro Manila every Saturday, 9 p.m. PST. Um, Louis occasionally guests there as Enrique Escolar. So, um, you guys better check in the next episode because everything's hyping up. You've seen me cry last episode, so that's like, just, yeah. You've yeah. been told. No. I have <laughs> you, better, <laughs> you better you better show up otherwise mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not like I'm friendly oh, you guys are monster really hearts like but yeah <laughs> um, that said uh, all our stuff if you want to catch up on Call of the Abyss and Midnight's in Metro Manila it's in the YouTube channel uh, link is in the down there somewhere <laughs> in my Twitch and if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm always active there. That said, this has been Call of the Abyss. We'll see you next uh, next week. <laughs> Bye, guys. We'll see Bye. Scarlet get in trouble again next oh, week. Oh, God. Hell yeah. <laughs>